Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all courtesies observed. My thanks to President Grimes for the invitation to deliver this message to the World Meteorological Congress on the occasion of the Ocean Dialogue. Meteorology is crucial to humanity's relationship with the ocean. Doubly so now, as I'm sure you know, the health of the ocean is in trouble. That trouble is primarily anthropogenic in cause. The plastic plague continues to pollute the ocean, along with our urban detritus, agro-industrial runoff, and the global effluence of raw sewage. Widespread harmful fisheries practices inflict further damage with our overfishing, our illegal fishing, $23 billion worth every year, along with $20 billion worth of government subsidies given to predominantly industrialized fishing fleets, hunting down diminishing global stocks of fish. These practices can and must be eliminated in conformity with the targets of SDG 14 and the other relevant SDGs. But most pernicious, pernicious for the ocean's health are the climate change effects of ocean acidification, deoxygenation and warming, bringing fundamental changes to marine conditions and life. Consider for a moment rising sea levels, changing ocean currents, death of coral, diminishment of shellfish and marine vertebrates and phytoplankton. And I think you'll agree the common enemy we have is our greenhouse gas emissions. The next 12 years will witness whether we succeed in bending the curve away from our current disastrous course of far exceeding a two degree world. Last year, the IPCC's 1.5 degrees report emphatically demonstrated that as we approach a two degree world, we lose the coral reefs, those great bunkers of biodiversity so fundamental to the health of the ocean. There are many who believe humanity's ultimate fate is linked to the survival of coral. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a plan to save life in the ocean. It is a plan to which all 193 member states of the United Nations agreed in 2015. I refer, of course, to the Paris Climate Agreement and the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, together with the rich mosaic of international conventions that underlie them. Our universal task is clear, to implement this global plan with utmost resolve and integrity. Most of us have our shoulders to the wheel and the wheel is turning, but history will be harsh on those who are not part of this common effort for the common good. To help the wheel turn faster, I urge all of you to encourage your governments to come to the Climate Action Summit in New York this September with firm commitments to radically reduce the GHG emissions. Dear colleagues, I send you good news from the United Nations. To further support the implementation of SDG 14, on May 9th, the General Assembly of the United Nations mandated the holding of the next UN Ocean Conference. This fully inclusive gathering will take place in Lisbon from the 2nd to the 6th of June next year under the theme of scaling up ocean action based on science and innovation for the implementation of Goal 14, stock taking, partnerships and solutions. I have no doubt that like the 2017 UN Ocean Conference, the Lisbon Conference in 2020 will be another ocean action game changer for the world. Amongst other things, it will serve as a multilateral launch pad for the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development from 2021 to 2030. The decade will provide a once in a lifetime opportunity for nations to work together to fill the voids in our understanding of the intricacies of the ocean's ecosystem and the changes it is going through. Equipped with this knowledge, we'll be able to make the right decisions on the solutions required for a secure future. The World Meteorological Organization will have a central role to play in both the UN Decade and the UN Ocean Conference next year. Without comprehensive collection and analysis of reliable data from the ocean and the atmosphere, it would be impossible for us to address the challenges of climate and ocean change. This work is fundamental to meeting the socio-economic needs of the billions of us who depend on the sustainable resources of the ocean and who rely on the issuing of, of advisories and warnings to ensure our safety at sea and in coastal areas. 
a partnership between WMO and the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, the IOC, will have increasing significance for humanity as we enter the new world that climate and ocean change is revealing. We look to partnership between meteorology and oceanography to cover research, sustained observations, data, forecasting systems, and service delivery. From governments to the financial insurance industries, from agriculture to water managers, to the fisheries sector and coastal communities, we're all depending on your work. And so, dear colleagues, I wish you well at the Ocean Di Dialogue. Have a productive week at the Congress, and I look forward to collaborating closely with you as we seek to overcome the great challenges ahead. And I thank you for listening.